I'd like you to use two pounds of clay for your bowls. Um, the other difference, so in addition to using a little bit more clay, the other difference between a bowl and a cylinder is the shape that you center it to. So this time when you're centering, center the clay to a shape that's a little bit lower and a little bit wider. So you'll spend a little bit more time with the downward pressure. Think of the shape of a birthday cake. So I'm starting off with a shape that's a little lower and a little wider. The other big difference between a cylinder and a bowl is that when I open the clay, and I'm just pressing my thumb downward, I want to leave a half inch of clay at the bottom instead of a quarter inch. And I want a rounded bottom. So what I'm going to be doing now is I have it open to a half inch. I'm going to be compressing the floor of this bowl from the center up to the edge in a nice cylindrical motion. No flat bottoms. So up to the top edge and down to the center. Up to the top edge, down to the center. Spending a moment really just to practice the smooth motion prevents any cases of beginner's hump in the bottom of your bowls, any nooks and crannies for your spoon to get cut, and it also prevents cracking problems. So I'm compressing a nice rounded bottom of my bowl. If I want to check, check the depth, remember that I can always check it with my pin tool. Insert, mark with my finger. See I had that I have a half inch. I want you to have at least a half inch at the bottom so that we have enough to trim. Next thing that I'm going to do is come in with my metal rib or my rubber rib and I'm going to practice that nice smooth motion of going from the center up to the top edge. Remember, don't hold it at a 90 degree angle, just turn it slightly away from you. And it's perfect time to practice because right now you're not worried about knocking your bowl over. It's perfect to practice the smooth motion every time you open a bowl. So you can see right now that I have a nice rounded curve in the bottom of my bowl. Okay, now I'm ready to pull up my walls. So the other slight difference here is that as I'm pulling, I'm actually letting that inside hand push out a little bit. Gently release pressure, control the top rim. So instead of being so concerned with pulling in towards the center, I'm actually pulling outward just a little bit. And work out some shapes in your sketchbook Experiment with different shapes of bowls that you'd like to make. Perhaps bowls for different items. One for cereal, one for salsa, one for salad. It's always good to have something in mind when you're creating a pot. My last pull, I'm pulling out, pushing in, pulling out. Kind of pre-shaping, playing around a little bit with the contour of the wall. And don't worry about this extra clay that I have at the bottom. That clay is necessary to support the cantilever of the bowl and it's clay that will be trimming away. So that's part two of making a bowl is trimming. Ribbing is also very important when you're making a bowl. So have that curved rib, wet fingers on the inside and pushing the bowl into the curve of the rib, clean off the rib. So it's a great way to remove slurry adds volume to your bowl as you're drying out the clay, so you're removing moisture. And I always rib the inside first, or the outside first, and then the inside. So rib the outside first. Now when you're throwing, you generally have this kind of landslide at the bottom here. It's uneven, a lot of extra clay. Always remember to come in with your wooden knife and I'm chewing it up to round. Makes it easier to recenter it upside down if I start off with a round pot. And it saves me a little trimming. Okay. Let's do a little bit more ribbing. I'm 
my last step is always to rib on the inside. So again, it's a great way to thin the wall out and add a lot of volume to your bowl as you're removing mud. The very last thing I do is set the curve in the bottom of the bowl. Especially if you have a large bowl or one with, that's very cantilevered, if I make it very bulbous and very full, it thins out the wall, but also as it's spinning, it's a shape that wants to fall down. So as I'm throwing it, I let it stay upright, and it's the last curve that I set. So right now I'm just compressing a nice smooth curve on the bottom. Okay, my little bowl is almost done. Make sure that I'm happy with the quality of the rim. And make sure that your top rim is not too sharp or too fragile, um, because remember, we're gonna be turning them upside down when they're leather hard to trim them. Okay. So one other thing I'd like you to keep in mind is that the wheel is useful for generating round shapes, um, but they, you don't have to stop there. You can look at the examples on this poster over here and feel free to alter the shape. So feel free to alter it from the round. This is something that I like to do. And I can alter it immediately or if the surface of your pot is a little bit wet, just let it dry for 10 or 15 minutes. Remove the bat, work on the next piece and alter it when it's not quite so sticky. But if you've really ribbed the surface well, you can do it immediately. Um, so feel free to experiment with altering. Remember that your pots do not have to be round. You know, and I can really, I can go around this again and again. I can make this as organically shaped as I desire. Okay, so that's step one is throwing a bowl. Step two is trimming your bowl. So I'm going to leave this bowl uncovered for about one to three hours. And make sure if you have it in front of the fan that you're really aware of it, that you're turning it about every 15 minutes. We want our bowl to be leather hard. And leather hard, again, is a state of dryness that's like cheddar cheese. It's kind of a cheese-like consistency. It's the perfect time to, to carve. It's partially dry, um, and it hasn't started changing color yet. 